Hello, everybody, and welcome to Frozen Frontier. Uh, Nick, how are you doing today? Good. Yeah, I'm feeling well. Thank you. Excellent. So we're here doing Kel Williams flashback episode or prequel episode or whatever you want to call it. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at Kel William before he was Kel William, before he was even, you know, anything. Uh, yeah, this is yeah. his like pre-Squire days or just about to be Squire days. Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about who you are at this point in your time? Yeah, so we have I have been over this um, back in the day. Let me see if I can just uh, open up my, my document, make sure I get all the numbers right. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, William's um, the son of John Marshall, who is a powerful nobleman. Uh, south of Solwick, he's in charge of a few villages south of Solwick. So, you know, he's probably got about 50 to 100 men at arms overall. Um, and he has five sons, four of which are older than William. William's the youngest son. And as such, um, doesn't stand to inherit any land or titles, barring some sort of catastrophic family event where everyone were to die. Yeah. Um, and to make, make him more feel of an outsider. Uh, William's obviously very large and muscular and interested in combat and the, the life of a knight, things like that. Well, most of his brothers and his father are more politically savvy. They're not as strong fighters. They're more, you know, good accountants, know how to work court, uh, mm -hmm. gain favor with the right people, things like that. So he's kind of a bit of an outcast with, within his family. And I think that's probably why he's pursuing like to leave home to become a squire to go and find his own way of life okay so where do we want to start uh are we starting with william hanging out with his brothers in his... yeah i think let's let's why don't we come in on uh william it's a, a normal day and he's being tutored by you know uh, the family tutor in in numeracy and uh accounting and he's struggling over sums trying to balance the books of the, the one of the villagers, you know, to try and uh, sort of train him up on, on how to manage land and to be a good ruler. Uh, and as usual, I think William is, is struggling with with his sums. He doesn't have much interest in this kind of thing, and his attention span is lacking. Uh, most of the time, he, he spends thinking about training out with the sword out in the yard with the you know the other men. Mm -hmm. I think your eldest brother, Roderick the Third. Uh, not Roderick III, I'm sorry, um, John III. Yeah. Is kind of like peering over your shoulder, watching you and kind of giggling to himself behind your back. Uh, not quite interrupting because the tutor's here, but definitely <laughs> being audible, uh, you know, mocking you as as well as he can. With <laughs> yeah. Uh, so despite his uh, strong temper, uh, sorry, you know, um, control of his temper in his older age William as a child is a lot more reckless and quickly agitated so he's sitting there struggling down trying to answer these sums hears the laughing of his older brother uh, realizing he must have made a mistake and just getting more and more frustrated until the um the nib of his his feather that he's writing with snaps and in a rage like stands up from the table and like pushes his brother and says why don't you just leave me alone why do you always have to make fun of me <clears throat> Patience, William, patience. We must continue on your sums. Grab another quill. No, I'm sick of this. I'm sick of it. I don't want to do it anymore. I, I want to get out of here. This is, this is shit. And uh, I think I'm going to push the tutor out of the way and like push my brother out of the way and like storm out into the storm out into the yard. You, you can hear your tutor collaring after you. William, William, you must get your sums right if you're ever to... William, come back! <laughs> Yeah, so I think he, um, you know, he probably grabs a training sword and heads out of the um, the immediate realms of the village and just starts wandering around the, the fields a little bit, sort of just thinking, um, just sort of like feels depressed at his position and how he's uh, a failure to his family and letting his father down and he's not the not the man that he should be. Yeah. I think you are walking through this village and come across some of the younger commoner kids. It looks like uh, the son of the, the local butcher and one of the, uh, what do you call them, the, the person who makes rope. Um, I can't remember the term for it, but the, the rope maker's son and the butcher's boy 
and the two of them have sticks, not even like training swords, but just like sticks that they've picked up and are practicing fencing kind of in the in the middle of the street as people move around. Sure. So I think, you know, he's found something that's a bit more interesting to him. I think he'll stop and watch these these two boys fight. Are they, are they about my age? Yeah. I think one of them's a, maybe 16 and one of them's 14. So they're right in your ballpark. Um, the sure. rope maker's son is the, the older one and he's a little bit bigger. Um, not Maybe not quite as big as you, but taller than you. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. What's the relationship with the, the common folk like, you know, is an ability that high and mighty that they wouldn't even talk to them or? Uh, well, with the adults, they probably wouldn't talk to them. With the kids, there's that little bit of extra wiggle room where kids can kind of get away with that sort of thing. Um, sure. Do I know yeah. the name of the uh, the older boy? Uh, his name is Liam. You that, Liam. Uh, Why didn't you fight someone your own size? They stop and look at you, and the butcher's boy is maybe a little bit more, he, he quite doesn't quite have the same understanding of the social structure. Um, right. And he immediately goes, yeah, fight someone your own size, Liam. Uh, <laughs> and Liam's just old enough to kind of realize, oh, you know, this is like, this is one of the marshals. I, I don't want to like, if I hit him, I'm gonna get in fucking sure. trouble. I so, say, uh, I say don't worry, Liam, forget my name. And uh, I'll, I'll I guess I'll uh, throw my training sword on the ground and grab the grab the stick from the younger boy and take okay. a fighting stance. All right, well, uh, let's do some basic combat right here. I'm going to say you're both proficient, but not specialized in sticks. Yep. That seems like a, a proper... That seems fair, right? If my... Let's see. So melee hits are just as... If I'm only 16 strength, I've just got plus zero to hit. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. 15. Ooh, okay. Um, maybe I should have initiative first. Maybe right. should, but I think you guys tie on the first round. And you go for a 15 against him. He goes for a 5 against you. And you just, like, whack the boy in the side. Yeah. For, wait, 1 plus 1 damage, 2 damage. Nice. Oh, that's right, because you have strength bonuses. Just 1, yeah, just 1 point of damage. Uh, extra strength. So, I mean... Uh, I don't know. Does he? Does he? Does he come back for more? Yeah. No. It's like a, a nice whip across his face and leaving like a, a red welt where the stick smacked him. Uh, he seems pretty pissed off by this, and I think you guys roll initiative. Yeah. Sure. I think uh, William is angry and wants to let off some steam. So, even though it's not really appropriate. Uh. Yeah. So he comes back with his sword, swinging, slashing at you, and like scraping you against the knees. I don't think anyone's wearing armor. Yeah. For you know another point of damage, leaving a nice raised mark across your shins and knees. <clears throat> All right, William uh, grimaces and grimace quickly turns into a you know, sort of like an angry war face and swings again, but this time fails. You can hear his temper. you can hear the butcher's boy giggling and laughing at you. Ah, ha, ha, ha. All right, um, six for the rope maker's boy. So I think I will uh, I will feign a, an attack and uh, go in low and try and tackle him. All right, give me an initiative roll. Uh, would it be plus three? Uh, yeah, so you would go first. All right. So yeah, I try and tackle him to the ground and I'm going to try and go a bit too far and maybe like beat him up a bit. Mm-hmm. 15. Uh, that is a nice solid tackle. Give me an opposed strength check to see if you can stop him. He's a young boy, so he's going to oh, be no. eight. Oh. oh my god. So you go for a tackle, and I think he just like catches you as you shoulder into him, and like mm. step takes a few steps back, and you can see that this kid's like, he's probably wrestled some pigs in his time. Right. Um, he's got a lot more like on the ground training and fighting than even you have, and he just yeah. like easily tosses you and rolls you to the side. Uh, and comes after you while you're lying on the ground with his stick um, and just like proceeds to whap you across the back okay for um maybe he even like turns the stick around and holds the light end and takes the the heavier end of the stick and just cracks you with it um, okay. so really kind of getting nasty you know yeah so I'm down to four HP uh, I think this just aggravates William more and I think it's gone beyond play fighting now. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, and I think he's gonna. I mean, I feel like he's. I'm better off fighting with my fist than I am with a stick. Probably, um, yeah. Our assessment, yeah. So I think I'm gonna go in now and try and like just like punch this guy in the face, and I'm gonna go to town him if I can get him down. Okay. Uh, one. No. Oh. So he's like still standing over you, hitting you over and over again with the heavy side of the stick. Yeah, um, when um, you get to your feet and. Yeah. Oh, fuck. <laughs> God damn it. It seems I've had a problem with my rolls throughout my whole life. Yeah. So I think you start getting to your feet. It doesn't work. The boy keeps hitting you with the stick. And this is where the adults come in and separate the two of you. And you can hear Liam getting not only a talking to, but also a spanking right away. As like, yeah. don't you know whose boy that is? You can't go beating on poor Will. Uh, poor William like that he's just a yeah um, um i think once again you know somebody else comes in and solves your problems and steps in like takes care of everything leaving you yeah. helpless yeah i think um in the heat of the moment he lets he doesn't say anything and he lets the lets the kid get in trouble mm -hmm. um but you know whether we go straight to later that night or whatever but i think he sort of when he reflects on this there's a lot of shame sort of uh you know, he sort of gave that guy his words, and he was the one that escalated the fight and ended up yeah. losing. And, and I think, yeah, you probably get taken back home to your parents to, you know, and someone explains, oh, I'm so sorry, one of the one of the village boys was beating up on William, had him down on the ground and hitting him with a stick. We, we intervened when we could, but look, I think he's going to have some bruising for the next couple of days. And your dad yeah. kind of dismisses it as, well, sorry, my son's causing trouble again. Uh, don't don't worry about it too much. He's a hot-headed youth. Yeah. Um, and yeah. dismisses the commoners and <sighs> puts his hands on his hips and looks at you and goes, what are we going to do with you, William? <sighs> I can't even fight properly. I, I don't... I'm a, I'm a disappointment. Well, we're not... Our family is not one for fighting. We are managers, con uh, what do we call it? Um, custodians of the land and of the people. Fighting is for lesser houses. I'm not as I'm not as smart as you and my brothers. Well, we know that, but you have to work twice as hard to keep up. But look at me. <clears throat> I should be a knight. I'm built to fight. What? It's. I, if I stay here and and rule over one of these villages, I'll only continue to be a disappointment. I, is there not something something else I can do? I could work with the train with the guards or learn to fight. I, we'll talk about this over dinner. Get out of my sight. Dismisses so I I you. Go back to my room and listen to you know heavy metal and look at my posters of all the great knights. In my room. It's mm -hmm. <laughs> like, oh my god, I hate this family. Uh, no, yeah, no. feel you know, it feels bad, right? But uh, yeah. sort of like tries to calm down uh, and has a a bath and gets ready for dinner. All right. Uh, I think later dinner comes around. Where the hell is our dinner track? I thought I had. Guess we don't. Um, the dinner comes around. Yeah. Uh, every, the servants come out with the plates. Here, everyone's seated. Your other brothers are properly eating. They're taking the time to to not spill their food, not make a mess. They've all been trained to you know eat properly at the dinner table. Um, what What are you like? I think he's like. Um elbows on the table that's that's you know that's bad etiquette i don't know if you have that in america but you're not meant to put oh. your elbow on the table. Uh, my, just, my know, mother was a, a big fan of miss manners and would frequently quote her to us oh really so, yes. I, don't, I don't know who miss manners is but i can it imagine. was like a like an article in a, a paper a long time ago where people would write their etiquette questions to miss manners and then their, yeah, their right. responses would be posted and you should never do this and always do this and miss manner says it's improper in this sort of party to engage in this sort of behavior <laughs> that sounds like a very <laughs> british thing but uh, yeah so i think he's yeah. like elbows on the table like slumped over you know like sort of face down he's not sat up straight and um i don't know maybe 
maybe he's not even really eating with a fork. He's just, you know, eating with his hands. Yeah, you get like a, a sharp look from your mother and a, a reprimand on your table manners. And it's just been a shitty day for you. Everything you seem to be involved in, is you're getting criticized for, or, you know, yeah. you can't yeah, do yeah. it right. And my back hurts where I've been beaten up by this, by this like kid. Yeah. And generally, I think I ju he just, um, his, his brothers and his father are probably talking about, you know, politics mm -hmm. or something. He's just trying to like not listen to it. Right. Uh, halfway through this not listening dinner, you hear your father speak up and say, mm. So little Willie here said he wanted to become a knight. What do you think, dear? Is he old enough to squire? Um, and your mom kind of like turns to him and you, you get this impression like this is a, a conversation that they've already had that they're replaying in front of you. Sure. Um, and she goes, oh, a squire, well... If he'd like to go off and really, you know, never make anything of himself, I guess he could. But you know what happens to most knights? They end up dying in war or working all their lives. But if that's really what William wants, perhaps we should let him. And that there's is like, what a, I want. like a grin that goes between your mother and father uh, as if they've got some sort of like scheme here. Yeah. Uh, your, your other brothers kind of get a little bit quiet and like, what's going on? Um, and all eyes fall to you. That is that is what I want. I, I want to learn to fight, to be a knight. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, if that's going to be the case, you're going to have to learn how to groom a horse and clean your own clothes and sew your own clothes when they get damaged and keep your weapons polished. It's quite a lot of work. You'll basically be doing servant's duties for another person. It does not really serve a man of your stature to be a squire, you know. You'd, you'd, he looks around to make sure there's no servants in the room. You'd be lower than a servant. It's for a short time, right? Until I become a knight? Well, yeah. until whoever he squires you thinks you are worthy of it and thinks you've made it there. You've always, could... you've heard the stories of the men who are squires until their mid-twenties, haven't you? The shame that they've brought upon themselves. I promise, I promise that it won't be me. I'll be good at this. I'll come back here as a knight and I'll bring honor to you and mother and our family. Uh-huh. Yes, of course, son. Well, I don't see why he can't give it a shot. Get all this foolishness out of his system. Maybe it'll... Maybe the fresh air and hard work will do you good. Set you on the right path. Nuts. Yes. Mm -hmm. When? Where? Well, I believe uh, an old associate of ours will be coming for dinner tomorrow night. Uh, a Kel Roderick. Uh, I'll ask him tomorrow if he would be willing to squire you. Although it'll probably be some time before the actual official bow gets put on the deal. So I think uh, he st stands up. Thank you, father. And then we'll like run up and like hug his, his father and his mother. Uh, and, uh, they're rebuffed by this show of you know, emotion and joy. <clears throat> of course, go go back to your seat and finish your dinner. <sighs> so yeah, I think he tries to sit up straight and um, picks up his fork. Yeah, starts to try and eat a bit more proper. All right. Uh, I think the dinner, rest of the dinner, passes pretty easily, and afterwards, your brothers come around you as you're all packing up for bed tonight. Um, not your oldest brother this time, not not John the Third, yeah. But um, the, the next oldest one, Edgar, is like, kind of comes over to your bed and goes, "So, flunked out of school already, huh? Gonna go be a a footman." Playing on the the double meaning of footman as like a servant and footman as a soldier. I'm I'm gonna be a knight. Uh huh. You'll see. Uh huh. You were laughing at me when I've got metal armor and a sword. No, we'll laugh at you when you're stuck in the stockade because you're too low to get out of jail. Uh, I think usually William might sort of stand up and try and like fight him about this. Uh, he says, well, well I, don't, I don't care what you think. It's Cal Roderick I need to impress and I'll uh, sort of like get into, into bed and I don't know, like uh, read a scroll or something that, I've, that he's got right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, your brother is sensing weakness 
uh, in the room proceed to have a, a loud conversation as if you're not present where they're practicing their higher mathematic functions and you know, <laughs> showing off their knowledge like, ah, uh, so what's the capital of Akuba? Oh, it's Sandishar. Good job. You got it. Now, what's the capital of Eridon? Oh, that's Stromheim. Ooh, what's the capital of Matava? Uh, you know, they kind of go through it and kind of just show yeah. off their, their general knowledge. Selenia. What's the capital of Mystria? I don't know. Why don't we ask William? William, what's the capital of Mystria? Um, um, he says, looking at the map. I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't matter anyway. Why do I need to know that? What use is it to know the capital city of some faraway kingdom that you'll never visit? It's Crown Hold. <laughs> <Whatever>. <laughs> All right, William. Here's an easy one. What's the biggest river in Drekus? Um, Come on, it's the biggest river. Uh, I'll say the only river I know, the Buford River. Oh my God, that's like the smallest <laughs> river. The Berg River is the biggest one, idiot. It's the one that comes from the mountain. Hello. It's the one they sail all the ships up. God, William, you don't know anything. Yeah, well, at least I don't sound like I'm out of an American TV movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I think I think he makes an effort to try and um, control his temper and ignore them. Right, he's got he's got some hope for the future now. Right, but you know, your brothers are being an ass, are being asses to you, and yeah, yeah. yeah. All and right, they, they, they always they always act so prim and proper in front of mother and father, but then you know, like when we're alone, they're like proper dicks. Yeah, totally. Um, your older brothers continue talking about like the girls that they were meeting uh, when they were out in society at the you know the the farmers ball earlier and how they were meeting with these other people from nearby villages the other nobles from nearby villages and exchanging stories of like kissing girls and making uh, family connections and all this sort of like older brother stuff because I think some of these guys are probably like 18 19 already yeah I think so yeah yeah. Um. Yeah, so I just carry on reading like Super Night Weekly or whatever magazine. Mm -hmm. God, it's like you know, pictures of knights and I know that doesn't exist. <laughs> That's what he would be doing if we were right. on a team. It's probably more actually like a, a book of stories of like yeah. you know, the the tomes of the the records of ancient knights who have done great deeds and you know there's a yeah. story in here about this guy who slew this black dragon in the the deep wood swamp and. How uh, you know he, he came in here with his his, um, his would be wife that he would later on marry, and the two of them, you know, fought their way through the swamp and all these monsters in there, and found a dungeon where this black dragon lived, and killed the dragon and brought it home, and you know saved the day that saved Bon May, this big trading city, and you know g gifted Sorry. the the dragon's head to the king, and got a, a lease of land in Berkshire, and blah 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 blah. Yeah, maybe the, the story talks about the Bag River as well, right? Yeah, it does, and you're kind of, oh, fuck, that's right. That, the Berg <laughs> River is the one that he dragged the bo dragon's body up. I should have known that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, I think he, like, sort of goes to sleep with a smile. Mm-hmm. Like, looking forward to tomorrow. All right. So the next day, Kel Roderick does show up. Uh, he comes in uh, just by himself this time. Uh, he's got a horse and he's got his armor on it's just like shining plate mail he's got a long sword at his side his horse even has some barding on it and it's like a big heavy war horse it's one it's perhaps the biggest horse you've ever seen it's got to weigh a good like 5,000 pounds wow. it's huge he looks yeah. like a total badass than this guy yeah uh, yeah definitely so I think uh, you know William eyes wide um I don't, he doesn't know if this is where he's going to get introduced to him. Like, is his father around? Yes. Yes. So I, I like, that, is that him? Uh, your dad kind of nods, but shh, shh, hold on, hold on. Um, and he kind of tries to brush you aside while he goes and meets Kel Roderick. And the, the knight steps down, his armor jingling as he goes. And your father and him embrace for a little while. And chat and i think you're on the side and we eagerly waiting to meet this guy and your father keeps like putting it off and putting it off and putting it off and yeah. eventually leads roderick inside without even letting him talk to you or okay. letting you talk to him 
I guess I, I follow I follow in, in behind. Do I have um do I have like armor and a and a sword and a horse? Is that stuff that I've got? You probably don't have any armor of your own. You know, your family's not really into the, the martial stuff, yeah. but the the household guard would have some spare armor that you probably try on sometimes and some training weapons that you probably use. You you might actually own your own sword by this point. That that seems fair. So I think I will I will go and get gather my sword if mm -hmm. uh, you know I want to be wearing it when I when I follow into the house after Cal Roderick and my father. Okay. Yeah. Uh yeah. So I go, you know, <clears throat> maybe they're, they're they're talking in a in a room or or something, and I'll uh, I'll sit outside the room, straight waiting for them to to finish and try and introduce myself. Sure. Uh, eventually, your father seeing you like in the hallway, waiting for half an hour, <laughs> waves you in, and goes so <clears throat> Roderick, my son William here has been wanting to squire for a night. Uh, would you be interested in taking on a, a young man as a squire? And Kel William takes a... Kel Roderick looks you over and waves you over to him. Yeah, I go, I go forward and I uh, sort of stand straight in front of him. My sword. Not, not drawn, but, you know, right. where he can see it. So why do you want to be a knight, boy? I want to fight. I want to earn glory and honor for the for the crown and the kingdom, and for my family. I, I want to do something that I'm good at. I, my my father and my brothers are all really really smart, and I just I I just I think I'm more suited to other things. Do you think you're stupid? No. Despite what my brothers say, I don't think I'm stupid. But I'm just don't have a head for numbers. Hmm. You can count, though. Yeah, sure. One, two, three, four, five. Can, can you read? Yeah, yeah, I can read. I, I've been reading um, a book about legendary knights. I, mm. I quit, I say the name of the book, you know. Mm -hmm. Who's uh, your favorite? Uh, I, I'll recount the tale of the, I don't know his name, the knight that killed the dragon, the story that I read last night. Hmm, Desmond. Good yeah. story. Cal Desmond. He nods slowly uh, before saying, you know, Desmond wasn't actually a full-fledged knight. There are other paths to greatness. He's... <clears throat> Sorry, he says to your father. He was a commoner, actually. Made it into the annals, though. He's a great man, but um, mm. to be a... To be your squire, to be to be come a knight, seems to be the best path for me to learn to, to fight, to be a, a man of honor and stand for something. Mm-hmm. I want to learn from you. You look so you're you're like the knights in the stories. Your armor is shining. Your horse is huge. Trust me, I, I can. I'm strong and I'm quick and I can fight and I'll. Uh, I'll It'll I'll be come. hard work. I, I'm not. I'm not afraid of hard work. Have you ever worked a hard day in your life? Uh, I, it's up to you to decide. Um, yeah, I, sometimes I help with the, the the shoveling of the... I don't know, you know. Like, I sometimes help the commoners with the chores when, when, when they need a bit of extra strength. You hear your father, William! I, 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 I can't stand sitting inside all day reading books. I just sometimes <sighs> have to get out and do stuff. God, you'll, you will be the ruin of your house. Helping the commoners shovel shit? Really? Really, William? I, I, I look at my father and I look back at Roderick and I sort of like pleadingly look at him and... Uh, you can see Roderick's got like a good chuckle going on. He goes, sure, sure, I could use a new squire. Really? Well, my last one got kicked by a horse and died. I, 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 you know, I don't look back at my father as he says that, and I, uh, so I swallow that down and say, well, I, I know how to work around horses. Well then, I have to go visit a, a particularly nasty troll cave in the morning, that's why I'm out here. A troll? Uh, but afterwards, I would be happy to take you to Solwick and make no. it official. No, no, let me, let me come with you, I'll, I'll prove myself, I'll, 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 uh... I'll mind your horse. Trolls live in caves, right? I'll mind your horse. 
uh, Roderick seems to be considering the option while your father goes, Now, now, William, don't rush into this. Trolls aren't something to be messed with. I know you've been reading about them, but a real troll is much different than one you might find in a book. Yeah, look, look at him. Roderick can kill a troll. I'll be fine. Of course you can. But you might get underfoot. I don't think that's quite appropriate for you. Father, please, let, if, if this is to be my path, then let me choose it. Let me choose how I walk it. Roderick kind of just takes it in and goes, well, if he's going to be a squire, he'll have to face dangers eventually. Sure, you can come. No, Roderick, please. This is not the way it should be done. Uh, Roderick kind of just like waves your father away Sweet. and says, well, William, this is the way it's going to be. You best come with me in the morning. I'll be ready. I'll be there at the crack of dawn. I'll see you tomorrow, Roderick. Thank you. And I'll, uh, I'll like, sort of, like, awkwardly All shake right. his hand and, like, run off giggle. Uh, as you're running off, you can actually hear a soft but heated argument between the two of them with your father saying something like, Come on, Roderick. The boy could get killed. Seriously. This is... It's, it's too early for that. He's not ready. And then Roderick saying something like, I wasn't much... Uh, younger than him when I started, and I turned out fine. He's a strong boy. He'll he'll be able to handle himself. Besides, it's just one troll cave. It's already been scouted out. There's only one entrance. I'll be in front between him and the trolls the whole time. I'll just have to watch the horses. He'll be okay. Um, I think that conversation moves on, and you lose your ability to hear it. Yeah, so I, I go and get my... um you know, my sword, and I go and, like, borrow some armor from the, like, a gamble some or whatever from the, the town guard's barracks. Mm-hmm. Uh, and do I, I assume I've got a horse as well? Uh, yeah, your family has a stable. You have a horse that it, you call your own in the stable. Yeah, so I will, like, you know, spend some time brushing my horse, sharpening my sword, mm-hmm. getting the gambeson fitted properly. Um, and I think, you know, he doesn't really understand, he doesn't really... The arrogance of youth, right? He doesn't really understand the danger that he's putting himself in tomorrow, so he sleeps sadly, despite it being probably the most dangerous thing he's ever done. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he sleeps soundly and dreams of, uh, you know, beheading trolls and things like mm-hmm. that. All right. I think we're actually going to go to our first break here, and when we come back, we will see William and Roderick heading off to go fight a troll. So, right. see you guys on the other side.